How do you actually use a sextant to take sights? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use it to measure the altitude of a celestial body. You will need a properly adjusted sextant, so if you haven't watched the previous video about errors and corrections, I would recommend watching that first, and it's on the card at the top of the screen. What we're going to do is measure the altitude of this red body. I've just coloured it red to make it easier to see the technique that we're going to use. The altitude is just the angular distance between the body and the horizon, as measured from the observer's position. In this case, the sextant is the observer. So, the first step is to set the index arm and micrometer drum to zero, or as close to zero as possible. If you have a small index error, of course, zero on the scale will not quite be zero according to the instrument. At this point, it doesn't really matter because you're going to apply index error at the end. While set at zero, the instrument is basically just a telescope. You can look through the sights and see an image. As the instrument is like a telescope, you'll obviously need protection when looking at bright objects. This mainly applies when you look at the sun, but do be careful if you're looking at anything really, because they can be surprisingly bright. You can use these shades as eye protection. There are a set in front of each mirror, named accordingly. So you've got the horizon shades and the index shades. You will need to use both for proper protection. If I aim straight at our body and apply one of the index shades, you can see half of the image is suitably dimmed. If we now swap over and apply a horizon shade instead, you can now see the other half of the image is dimmed. Applying both a horizon shade and an index shade gives you full protection. It's safest to start with all of the shades across, and then you gradually remove them until you can see a clear image. With experience, you'll gradually learn the best combination for different situations. If the body is dim enough, you may not need any shades, and I'm actually going to remove them all for this example, just to help with the clarity of the explanation in the video. So, for the sight, you start by looking straight at the celestial body, with shades adjusted as necessary. With the sun, it's easy, but with stars, they may take a little bit of finding. You will want the body aligned right in the middle of the image, half of it reflected and half of it true. But here is one of my little tricks. While you continue setting up the sight, actually get the image in the middle of the horizon mirror instead. It will make it way easier to stay focused, especially on a small star or something hard to see. We'll align it properly when it comes to the fine adjustment at the end. Next, you want to get hold of the clamp at the bottom of the index arm. This will allow you to move the index arm freely. Have a little practice wiggle just to see how the image in the horizon mirror actually moves when you're moving the index arm. Then you want to start to bring the entire instrument down, aiming it towards the horizon. At the same time, you want to use that clamp to move the index arm and keep the celestial body in the center of the horizon mirror. Once you reach the horizon, you want that to be in the middle as well. For the final part, you bring the celestial body to the center of the image. You'll normally find there's a little optical quirk here that means you can see both the horizon and the body if you have it right in the center. That doesn't work in my example as this is all computer generated. Once you've got it as close as possible with the clamp, you can then use the micrometer to do the final fine adjustment to bring the body in line with the horizon. At this point, if you use the shades, you might find that you need to remove one of the horizon shades to make the horizon easier to see. Just be certain you're removing correct shade, otherwise a bright body could burn your eyes. With a star, it's easy to line up a tiny dot of light, but with a large body like the sun, or our red sphere here, it can be a lot harder. Almanacs usually give an upper limb and a lower limb measurement, so you can line up the top and the bottom respectively. In this case, I've aligned the lower limb with the horizon. When you think it's all lined up, you should slowly rock the sextant from side to side, keeping it pointed straight ahead. The celestial body will appear to follow a path in the image. All you're doing is checking the sextant was perfectly upright when you took the sight. If it was upright, the body will just kiss the horizon at the lowest point on its rocking path. If it wasn't upright, the body would drop slightly below the horizon. If this happens, you just need to use the vernier again to make the lowest point on the path just kiss the horizon. Now you've got the sight properly set in the sextant, and you can just read off the measurement from the scale arc and the vernier. Any index error then needs to be applied to get the correct reading. 
For example, say you measure a body's altitude at 12 degrees 25.2 minutes, and you have an index error of 1.5 minutes off the arc. You need to add those 1.5 minutes to your measurement. Your altitude then becomes 12 degrees 26.7 minutes. Likewise, if your error was on the arc instead, you just subtract it from your measured altitude. And now that brings us to the end of this sextant tutorial series. Hopefully you found all the information useful and are now able to take sights using your own sextant. If you have any questions or suggestions for further tutorials, just let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.